Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the 2021 exam series. In this video we're going to be looking at the queries and reports. As you can see in this exam question, activity 3, we're given 40 minutes to do the queries and the reports. Normally we start off with an easier query, query A, where we're asked to present some findings based on a few criteria. Here we can see we have to create a query that creates five days detailing the gallery name, the gallery type and the number of days only. So in order for us to do this we're going to need to create a new query. So click on the create section inside of Access. We're going to go down to create a query in the query design option by clicking on the button and then it will load up our query area. What we need to do is click on the add tables link if this isn't displayed, what we can do is just look on our ribbon and you'll find that we have our add table button and that opens up in this section on the right hand side. We're going to choose a few tables. The first table we're going to choose is exhibition, gallery and then we may choose gallery type as well. Notice that it's showing all of the fields inside of our tables and it also shows the links between them. What we want to do in this query is we want to select the information that was asked for in that query. We're going to choose gallery from the gallery table. We're going to choose the gallery type from the gallery type table. And then we can choose from the drop down toggle on the field if we want to, or we can just simply double click on the number of days from the exhibition table. As we asked for inside of our original queries that we needed to show all of the gallery types that are commercial. So in order for us to do this we're going to go inside of the criteria section we're going to put some speech marks and we're going to type in commercial. Next we need to put in the information about the number of days. We've been asked in our query to show all of the galleries that are more than five days. So in order for us to do this we're going to go into the criteria area for the number of days and we're going to put in the greater symbol which is the arrow to the right equals and then the number five. As you can see from the screen now we've got all of the galleries that are more than five days. We're going to save this query and what we need to do when we're using our saving conventions we need to use QRY to demonstrate that this is a query and give an appropriate name as well so commercial gallery five days plus. I'm going to move on to the next query inside of our task activity and query B is normally the more complicated of the queries. Here we've been asked to create some form of query that shows the gallery and how much commission that the galleries will earn. In order for us to do this we're going to select some tables again so we're going to use the table artist, the exhibition and table gallery and this time we're going to put in the information as has been requested from us by the exam board. So we're going to choose the artist's surname and in this instance we're going to put in a parameter query. What a parameter query allows us to do is inside of the criteria section if we enter a square bracket and then a message to say enter an artist's surname and then close the square bracket this creates a user prompt. So anytime this query is run a little box will pop up asking the person to enter an artist's surname. Next we're going to choose from the toggle box on the field section the artist's initial as is requested again in the exam paper. Then we're going to be looking at what the exhibition ID is from the exhibition table. And then we're going to use the option for totals on the ribbon. What this does is it allows us to have a new section added to our query where we can choose to count the number of exhibitions. We're going to give this a quick run and we're going to put in Andreasen as a tester and we can see that the Andreasen surname has got the count of one exhibition. So this seems to be working so far but we're not quite completed yet because obviously we need to do the predicted commissions as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put in what's known as an if statement or an I if statement. The I if statement is going to look for any value 
that is 1, then we'll set the value to 40, otherwise we're going to set it to 20. This is to do with the amount of commission that we want to calculate in one of the fields that we're going to add in a minute. So as you can see here, I'm typing in the following if statement. So it's commission rate colon i if curly bracket square bracket a gallery underscore type underscore id close the square bracket is equal to one then 40 so we put in a little comma there 40 and then another comma is our do this otherwise 20 and then close the bracket so now that we've got our commission rate created we're going to need to create the calculation or the calculated field that takes the value that is presented in that commission rate section and do a little bit more calculus on it. So we're going to take and we're going to put in the predicted commission is going to equal. So in this instance, we'll type in predicted commission colon. It's going to be the sum of the value presented. So it's going to take the predicted sales. We're going to put that in our calculation and we're going to divide that by 100 and then times it by the commission rate. So as it's showing on the screen right now, we're going to do predicted commission colon sum curly bracket square bracket predicted sales. And this is taken from our predicted sales section in a second. Close the square bracket again, close another square bracket and then we're going to divide it by 100 times it by and then the square bracket commission rate square bracket and then close that final bracket. We need to choose that this is an expression in the total section. And I can see that I've got a bit of a typo in that place there for gallery underscore type. So I'm just going to change that to include the underscore. And then as I said a second ago, we're going to have the hidden field, which is going to be presenting the information on the predicted underscore sales. And that's going to be taken from the exhibition table. With all of these pieces of information inside of our query, we should be able to run this. But I'm just going to untick the show criteria for that predicted sales thing. And then we're going to click on the run. It will prompt us for our artist name. We'll put in Andreas in again. And then we can see here that Andreas has a count of one exhibition. So the commission rate is 40 and the commission rate, once you look at the amount of sales times by 40, and then we have our value. What we want to do now is just close this query. We're going to give it again another appropriate name. So QRY to represent query. We're going to type in commission and click OK. We're now going to move on to the next part of our exam, which is looking at the report. Again, with the question, we're asked to display some information. As we can see here, we've got to display suitable report titles, gallery names, start date of each exhibition, the end date of each exhibition, the total number of exhibitions for each gallery, and the total number of days for the exhibitions that run in each of the galleries. So we're going to go and create a new query by clicking on the query design option. And we're going to just choose the tables that we need to use to create the query for our report. We're going to need the table gallery and the table exhibition. And the fields that we're going to need are the gallery name, the number of days, the start date. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our first of our own created fields inside of this query. We're going to be looking for the end date of the exhibition. Now what we can do is we can create our own field 
is a by using the information in the Drupal edit. So we're going to give it the name of end date, then colon, and then we're going to use the square brackets, and we're going to put in the exhibition underscore start date. This is going to get the value from that field inside of our query. Let me close the square bracket. Now we're going to add the value from the number of day field. So as you can see here, we've put a square bracket, num underscore days, and close the square bracket. What we're going to do is we're going to create this as an expression, and then we're going to go on to run. Now notice here, we've got a dialog box that pops up. This indicates to me that there's something going wrong with our query. It's well worth noting, whenever you create your own fields, just to make sure that you've spelled all of the field names correctly. Now, those of you that have followed along with me may notice I've actually mistyped exhibition date. So what I need to do is just jump inside of that line there and add a H, and then we're just gonna test this by running it again. And hopefully we get the right result. And as you can see, we've got the right result. We can see that the Brands Arts has three days. So the start of the exhibition is on the 26th of December, and it will end on the 29th. So we can quite clearly see that that query is working as we'd like it to. Next, we're going to close the query, just choose Save, and we're going to give it an appropriate field name as always. So using the prefix of QRY, and then we're going to do end date. Click OK, and then that's the first part of our report done. Next, we're going to move on to creating the report itself. If you go inside of the report wizard, we're just going to choose the query we've just created, and we're going to make sure that we group via the gallery option. Once we've chosen that option, we're going to click on Next. Change the orientation of the paper to Landscape. Click Next again. And this time, we're going to modify the design. And we're also going to change the name of our report to be RPT Exhibition Details. And click Finish. You'll notice that we've been given some, a nice little layout here, so we can see what it looks like if we click on View. And you can see that we've got it grouped by each of the gallery types, so Brands Art. You can see the exhibitions that are running, and the start and the end dates. So we're almost there in terms of creating a report for what we need in the exam. So in order to do some additional information to group and to get the total number of exhibitions in each gallery, we're going to right click on the detail tab and we're going to choose group and sort. This gives us another option down at the bottom of our screen as you can see. And we're going to choose to group on gallery. We're going to make sure that we do it with a footer section. So toggle that down, choose with a footer. And we're going to make sure that there is a head section. And we're going to move over to with no totals. And we're going to choose to make sure that that has the total of the group. So subtotal of the group in the footer. Click on that. And this is going to give us a count value inside of the footer, as you can see on screen at the moment. So essentially, we've got a text box there that's going to say equals count, open rounded bracket, square bracket gallery, close that bracket, and close the curly bracket. We also need to add a label, so we can click on the tools options and the controls area. And we're going to put a label in that says number of exhibitions. gallery. What we'll do is we'll just uh, see what that looks like by clicking on the view option. And as you can see, the count has worked and it's shown us the number of exhibitions that are appearing in each of those galleries. We're going to go back into the design view and we're going to do a few pieces of housekeeping. Within your exam, you can lose marks for lack of formatting 
and making your reports look like a report by leaving his up underscores and inappropriate naming. So what I would recommend you do is go back in, uh, put a proper title in there, drag it so it's centralized and give it some customization. Within the little heading areas that we've got, we can see that we've got some underscores and we've got num or an abbreviated name for number of days. So let's put that to be number of days. Same with exhibition, get rid of some of the underscores and the same for end date, we're going to put a bit of space in there. Now you might notice that some of them do span across uh, the, the content that goes into the actual report, but it's not a problem. What we can do is, as we did with the logo at the top, just click on it once, select the handles and drag it to where you want, and then you can put the corresponding date a bit just underneath it so it marries up quite nicely. So I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to go back to the view, just to double check, and we should have all of the required content in our report as had been requested from the exam board. I'm going to click on save, choose yes, and now we have completed the part C section of our report. We're now going to move on to the D section within the report, where we're asked to save our data as a report, but not as a screenshot, as a PDF into our folder for a submission. This is quite a simple task for us to do. If you right click on the report, you can export it using the options here, PDF, or if you go up to the actual ribbon in the toolbar and you'll notice that the same options there for us. Simply click on the PDF or XPS option. Choose the location where you want your PDF to be deployed. In your exam, obviously choose your exam areas so that you're putting the information in as it should be. Once you've found that, you may need to make sure that you're changing the file name that you're saving it as. Please remember to read the exam paper itself for any guidance on how you should structure your file naming and then click on publish. Once the report's been published, it'll open up an option for you to choose what you want to look at your PDF in. I'm going to choose the Adobe Acrobat Reader here and that should open up a little web page looking type thing and we can see that our report has been displayed to us as we'd expect it to be. Very well presented for anybody to read quite easily. Click on close and that concludes the activities 